Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yeah! I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. And on tonight's show, we're going to be talking about something that's been on everybody's mind these days. And that is the high cost of energy and how we as individuals can reduce our energy use, hopefully save some money, and in the long run, impact the environment in a positive way. My guest tonight is John Mangachi. He is an undersecretary of the Office of Policy and Management, and he is in charge of Governor Rell's initiative of the One Thing Campaign, which addresses all of these issues. John, thanks for joining me. Pleasure to be here, Sarah. Thank you. Why don't you introduce us to what the One Thing Campaign is? Well, I think, uh, let me put it in context, because the, the One Thing Campaign is actually a strategy that's um, designed to enable accomplishment of the governor's energy goals, which mm -hmm. were contained in her energy vision, which she released back in September of 2006. Mm -hmm. And that vision was a number of long-term goals to reduce fossil fuel consumption, increase the amount of renewables, uh, renewable energy that's, that's produced and consumed in Connecticut, as well as others. And as you would suspect, there were a number of strategies in that energy vision mm -hmm. that were designed to accomplish that, those goals or reach those goals. And one of the strategies was the development of a statewide energy conservation campaign. And when we were looking at the strategies, myself and uh, other members of my energy unit and the division that I oversee, we realized that there was really nothing, there was no legislation, there was no regulations that were necessary to actually begin this initiative. Mm -hmm. So we started uh, and we engaged a uh, marketing and public relations firm here in Farmington, Connecticut called Lang Durham, uh, selected them through a competitive process and they began to serve us up ideas about what the campaign mm -hmm. would be called or could be called. Um, but when we saw one thing, uh, we all sort of landed on that one and I brought it to the governor and to, to her staff and. They liked it. They liked the concept um, because uh, basically what the governor is asking everybody to do is to do one thing every day to conserve energy. And uh, if everybody in Connecticut was to do one thing every day, that would be three and a half million one things. Daily? And daily. Daily. Yes. Figure yeah. three and a half million right. people approximately in go. Connecticut. <laughs> Easy calculation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, if everybody did uh, one thing every day for a year, that would be over a billion one things. Wow. Uh, and that's the idea is to, uh, of the campaign, is to give people actionable, small actionable items that they can, they can do each day. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing will lead to another as you find one thing that you're doing. You know, all of a sudden you start looking around and say, hey, I can do this, I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea behind this is that, well, uh, climate change, energy prices, these issues sometimes are so large that people don't think that they can actually do anything about mm -hmm. them. It's so overwhelming. It's overwhelming, yeah. Uh, whereas here, um, you know, as, as our philosophy says, it's, it's a mindset, it's a movement, uh, it's an action. So mm -hmm. you, you can have an effect on this, right. uh, on those things. If you were to do one thing every day and if we had ideally, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people doing mm -hmm. something each day. So is, it, is the campaign uh, geared specifically toward a group of people like homeowners, individuals, businesses, schools, governments, all everybody. of the above? Everybody. everybody. Yeah. Because okay. if you're in a studio, you're in a home, you're in an office, wherever you are, um, there's things that you can do to, right. to conserve energy. Uh, no matter what place you're in, whether you're in your car, if your tires are properly inflated, or if you're running errands and you sort of map out your route to make it the most efficient mm -hmm. that you can. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, there's, there's things that you can do. There's one thing that you can do uh, in, in every setting. Right. And it does add up. Yes, it does. And, you know, yeah. and I, I think bringing it down to one small, um, tangible thing does make it Mm -hmm. easier and it also brings attention to that does make a difference yes um, because you might not think that I mean we're always harping on our kids to turn off the lights yeah and, you know and I think if you can explain to them why that makes a difference mm -hmm. just that one simple turn off the, the light yeah. it adds up you have to make the connection right yeah. 
Right, yeah. and, and it makes it more tangible for them what they can do. And that's what Lang Durham well found out. I mean, people, Lang Durham yeah. had a lot of experience in this space. Uh, they actually developed a Wait for Eight, Wait Till Eight campaign. I don't know if you've heard about that. I haven't. Uh, they developed it for United Illuminating, and okay. it was designed to uh, get people to use larger appliances after eight o'clock. Okay. when the demand on the New England power grid is not as high uh, as high. it is during the day. And um, through that process, they realize that if you give people um, or if you provide them with, you know, again, actionable items, mm -hmm. um, they'll respond. And they did. Right. And the Wait Till Eight campaign was very effective and is still going and it's still effective. Um, so that was sort of what was behind, uh, that was what was in their mind when they were thinking about what to do with this campaign. It's something yeah. people can grasp on to. Yeah. And, and they were sitting around and brainstorming, and, and uh, Eric Cavoli, I think was the creative director at Lang Durham, just said, you know, if everybody could just do one thing, right. and that's how it happened. And make it simple. And I, you know, I, I did a show earlier in the year about eating healthier, mm. and sometimes it just seems overwhelming, like you just need to clean out your pantry and start <laughs> over again. Yeah. But it's not. It doesn't no. have to be that overwhelming. It can be just one simple change, and mm -hmm. the same with your energy consumption, one yeah. simple change. Yeah can make a difference. Well, and I think you raise a very good point. And I think that's what's at the heart of this campaign and just energy consumption generally is you have to take a step back and mm -hmm. say, okay, how do I actually use energy of all different types? Right. And say, okay, how can I accomplish or do the things that I need to do while using less? You know, mm -hmm. when you walk into a, a room to do something, uh, is there enough natural light in that room already where you don't have to turn on a light right. when you go in there? Um, uh, is there excess weight in your car that you're driving around that doesn't necessarily have to be there? Um, right. Because that would reduce your fuel efficiency and gas mileage. Um, so if you, again, you, if you just step back and say, all right, you know, how do I consume energy? What can I do to reduce it? And, and what are some of the one things that I can find? And, right. Um, as we've discussed, there's, there's thousands of one things up on the, the one thing ct.com website. Yes. So if people are having trouble finding them, they can actually, they, they can go to the, to go. they could go to the website right. and find them. And more importantly, if they have some that they're doing, they can go up to the website and they can register those one things along with and share ideas, the, and share ideas as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think too that, um, you know, if you take a step back and just look at your individual big picture versus thinking about it as, you know, our nation's using too much fossil fuel, we're too dependent on foreign nations for oil, and I mean, then it just gets, yes. ah! Yeah. But if you just think in your home, mm -hmm. and then, and it could benefit you from your energy bills. Yes, and, and more so, than likely it will. Yeah. yeah, which, I mean, we're all really wanting to yeah. do that. Oh, sure. It's October, we want yeah. to save in I our, know. you know, find ways to reduce how much energy and fuel we're using. Sure, So yeah. Now, you, this campaign, um, now you, you don't like to say it culminates in mm -hmm. an event that's happening on October 10th to the 12th, the Expo. Correct. But that's kind of the, a big showcase it's, of yeah. the campaign. It's talk, a, you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. The Expo is taking place uh, October 10th, 11th, and 12th in, at the Hartford Convention Center. And we have the entire convention center for three days. And we're calling it the World's Fair of Conservation. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's, it's not going to be your typical trade show, although there are going to be over 250 exhibitors there mm -hmm. that will have uh, all different types of technologies and ways in which you can conserve in your home, in your business, uh, with your cars. Uh, but we're also, there's, there's visual and performing artists. There um, is a 24,000 square feet of the um, expo floor is the one thing Palooza. And this is an area, it's, it's an interactive area that's been designed by Stepping Stones Museum out of Norwalk and Great also the, in, in conjunction mm -hmm. with the Connecticut Science Center. Yes. I don't know if you've had the pleasure of being down at Stepping Stones. But I have. Yeah. I, my in-laws live in that area. We've been there many times. It's fun. So, it is. It's a great place. Yeah, so you get an idea. It's fun what, education. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, I actually can't wait to see it because they're having, they're building particular things just for the Palooza, um, but then it's actually going to break down into smaller segments and it's going to actually travel throughout the state continuing to teach children oh, wow. about. Oh, so they're going to use it beyond the expo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a, actually, this is the first time that they'll be high, showcasing oh, what's terrific. been developed. And there's there's a maze and um, there's conservation quest. There's, there's I think, four or five different components uh, within yeah. the whole 24,000 square feet. So that wow. that's going to be a lot of fun. And um, it's going to be, you know, the home of a million one things. Right. You know, so it's a place where you can, I mean, it's not 
you know, drag your kids kicking and screaming to this home, you know, home improvement no. show. Yeah. It's something that will is engaging oh, and yeah. entertaining yes. and educational at the same yes. time. Yeah. For the whole and, family. And and interactive. Yeah. yeah. We've designed it so that it's not just this flat, one dimensional right. trade show. Yeah. This this is this is an experience. When from the time that you walk in, you're going to notice that this is something unique and mm -hmm. something different because as I said there's going to be performing artists around there's going to be people uh, you know just walking around mm -hmm. like the energy hog is going to be there and uh, fun. we have art farm uh, who does um, they do uh, of this sort of Cirque du Soleil like performance oh, wow. yeah um, huh. for fragile planet something for fragile planet I'm sorry I can't remember the complete name of it but you, you get the uh, and we have puppeteers there's gonna be puppeteers right. there we have several stages set up one inside the Palooza one one outside uh, so it should be a lot of fun I'm looking forward to it that's uh, great and so I it's for people of all ages Absolutely. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward <laughs> right. to the Palooza. So if you're geared up to, to improve your energy use at home, you can gear up to have your kids entertained and, yeah. and get be part of it. Yeah. Because I do think we all struggle with, you know, trying to make your f whole family understand, you know, why it's important to turn the lights out, yes. why, you know, why you should be doing certain things, make sure the doors are closed when the air conditioning's running, make sure the yeah. doors are closed when the heat's running, mm -hmm. all of those things. Um, I guess makes it more, they can visually see it and experience it and yeah yeah and we have well we have uh, I think about 1,100 students coming through on Friday um, they're from so uh, school groups yeah school okay. groups uh, grades three through six uh, from all across the state so they're coming in and um, they're going to be pulsing through at about I think in maybe 30 minute intervals and oh, they're going to stop and be oriented in the Palooza and then do a number of things in the Palooza and then actually follow through. Um, the entire expo because on the expo floor we have focal points okay. uh, so agriculture would be here and transportation would be here and right, business so would be here. All the different energy yeah. uses. Yeah all the different sort of by yeah area. I think there's there's eight different areas that we have. Oh, there's right. recreation mm -hmm. and we have um, a white carpet with um, I think it's going to be a green line down the center. So that's that's right. our oh. conservation superhighway. Oh, great. So you're going to be able to wind down the conservation superhighway, and you know there's going to be exits, so to speak. Yeah, and see We're, different areas. Yeah, you oh, can that's... you can jump off, and you know Whole Foods will be there talking about organic produce. Mm -hmm. uh, there's eating local, probably eating Save local energy and transportation of the food. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it seems also one of the things we've talked about is it's a grassroots movement where you, you kind of start from one person and spread the word. Um, you know, you bring school groups in, those school groups go back to their schools, spread the word. I don't know if they're, you know, some of them may or may not have plans to, to engage it, you know, to spread it throughout their school, but maybe through their classroom, then they bring it home. I spoke, to a I spoke to a principal that actually is doing that. He's doing that. He's going to uh, have the students that attend the expo go back and teach their fellow students. And share I think with it's learn. going to be some sort of assembly mm -hmm. type format where the children will actually re relate to the other students and to their peers. Oh, that's uh, great. What the expo was like, what they learned. Right. Um, the, the response that we received from educators across the state has been overwhelming. Yeah. I wasn't certain that we would be able to fill all of the slots and actually get to the 11 to 1200 students that was our goal. And once we sent out the notices through the principals and the State Department of Education, the responses came back. We filled up in a matter of days. So they're full. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But if you know, if um, the you know schools aren't necessarily able to attend at this point, they they can go themselves as an individual. Teachers could go as an individual, take it back to yes. their classroom. Sure. Um, and uh, families can go, mm -hmm. um, you know, share. It seems like it's such a great opportunity to share it with you know, Boy Scout troops, Girl Scout troops, yes. you know, just, just to yeah. do the grassroots mm -hmm. and then spread it. Yeah, and I forgot to spread mention that if, if um, your viewers can go up to onethingct.com, mm -hmm. they can download a discount admission ticket for the expo as well. Oh, that's great. You can okay. get $2 off on admission okay. if you go up to the website. So okay. you can go up, poke around the website, right. look at all the different things that we have up there, the one things that have been posted, right. and the, the various different areas of, of residential or business. And there's a mm -hmm. lot of tremendous information up there. It is a great website. And oh, it's right. you're yeah, continuing to add things to it. Yes. Um, now, when I first contacted you about doing a show on energy use and conservation, mm -hmm. and I really was coming at it 
initially from an individual standpoint that we're all kind of our pocketbooks are hurting yes it's getting colder mm -hmm. you know those oil trucks are going to start rolling into the house and every time they do you think oh no yeah you know the bill is going to follow no kidding so let's talk a little bit about um some of the things you can do at home. Some of them are obvious, some of them are not so obvious. And mm -hmm. I think, like you said, your website is a great resource. There's so many things we couldn't possibly talk about yes. today. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about a few that are specific to homeowners and families at home. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the obvious, particularly for winter, are insulating, yeah. sealing windows, mm -hmm. um, making sure you have enough insulation. Um, windows, windows, yeah, I know. Windows. Uh, windows, time, windows. Times are windows, tough, windows, yeah, but you yeah. know, to replace your windows with mm -hmm. more energy efficient windows is really probably the best thing that you can do. Um, but yeah, you start insulating. Right. Um, um, we, when we first bought our house, we live in one of the older homes in West Hartford, mm -hmm. and um, there are a lot of older homes in West Hartford, mm -hmm. but our house has some of those uh, leaded glass windows, yes. which we love. One of yeah. the things we love about the house. But you can't, you know, you can't replace them. Mm. Um, so one of the first things we did was we bought um, inserts that are storm windows for when things that you can't, windows that aren't irreplaceable or windows that you don't want to replace. Yeah. Oh, great. Le a little bit less expensive. Mm -hmm. We can keep the charm of our house. Yeah. But every fall, out come the inserts, and it's a huge project, but you yeah. can physically feel the difference once mm -hmm. the insert goes in. It's just more comfortable, so you're less likely to want to turn the heat up. Yes. Um, you know, there's no way that we can really calculate what the savings are because we bought them when we first bought mm -hmm. the house. But um, oh, it was a great solution. Well, it's also nice that they're clear because then they let natural light in. Right. So it'll, it'll warm, help right. warm the house. And they have the sunny. new technology, you know, of cost savings or of um, energy efficiency, um, but we can still keep our old. Yeah. Charming, you keep the character. Charming oh, leaky windows. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I have kind of a, a top ten list of things, the easy energy action plan, things that are very easy to do. And some of these are, um, I have some statistics on what you can save, which, because I think really we are, what some people are just mostly interested in is what it's going to save them. Yes. And it's nice that it impacts the environment, but a lot of people are kind of looking at their pocketbook, unfortunately. Yes. Um, so these... Um, the CFLs, which uh, I learned is can candescent fluorescent lights. Compact fluorescent. Compact fluorescent right. lights. Um, this is new lighting technology that w it's been around for a while. Compact fluorescents have been around for a long time. But they actually. seem to be catching. They're everywhere now. Yes. You really see them, and you can save right on the package. It tells you what you can save by putting one of these in. Mm -hmm. This one is a floodlight. It says over its lifetime, you can save forty dollars. Um, they're a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, John M. at Fowles in the center of West Hartford. Um, we had a nice conversation about this, and we actually were kind of calculating, is it more, you know, you, the bulb is more expensive. But the thing is, you don't have to replace these. Yeah. Well, very it says often. It lasts you five years. It lasts five years. Yeah. We have a lot of floodlights in our house, and we replace them all. Time. Yeah. So I think actually they end up, the bulb itself ends up being cheaper because you don't well, buy as many. Longer life, yeah, you buy them less frequently. And yeah. you save on energy. And you save on energy, yeah. And I think the smaller ones, I know the ones that I bought for my home, I think those last nine years. Yeah. The smaller ones, does that? Uh, well, this one says five years. That says but five years as well. Being, I'm not sure. I, I guess it depends on how much you use it. But again, the one thing concept, that's just one bulb. Yes. You add up all the bulbs in your house, mm -hmm. that's a tremendous amount of savings. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. So that's something that I think we're going to start doing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that's our one thing. One that's thing. Our, at least well, our one thing. One, well, actually, you started with your windows. Well, and the windows. The window covers, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm also a fan of having a fleece around. So if it's cold, a little mm -hmm. bit cold, but not, it's bearable. <laughs> you yeah. put the fleece on and, um, you know, crank up the heat when... You have people who can't bear the cold, but yeah, you know, like I mean, it's not, you know, you can yeah. keep yourself warm. Um, shutting off your computer. I know I keep my computer on all the time, mm -hmm. and I figure it goes into sleep mode, so that's okay, but still, that's really not. Still drawing power. It's still drawing power. Yeah. Um, and that's what's called phantom load. And interestingly enough, it, it accounts for the last statistic I saw, about 7% of national energy consumption really? is, 7%. Is, is electronic devices that are plugged in and you think they're turned off, but they're not. They're not. Anything that comes on instantly yes. is, is constantly drawing power. Your garage door opener, I don't know if you have a garage door yes. opener, 
that's constantly drawing power so that when really? you hit the button, it automatically opens. And wow. it's 7% of all of the, the energy consumption, huh. electricity consumption in, in the nation is that phantom load. That's why I think wow. one of what you're going to mention is unplugging your cell phone charger. Yes, and actually, uh, one of the one things that was on the website, mm -hmm. not only unplug your phone charger when you're not using it, but charge your phone in your car. In your car. And you don't ever have to use it. I've started to do that. Great idea. Yeah, and I actually got that from the One Thing website, too. Yeah. It never dawned on me. I didn't it yeah. occur to me either. I knew you needed to unplug it to, because it was still drawing energy, but I, I thought, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Bring your cell phone in your car. You have it there anyway. Yeah. So you might as well just plug it in and charge it. And then it's, that's renewable. You know, you're not using the energy from your home. Um, and so it doesn't have to be these big redo your house, you know, change all your windows out. Um, it can just be very, very simple things. Yeah. You like had. I love your thing we talked about. Talk put a, lid. About that put a lid on it. Well, when you're cooking food, you know, just make sure that there's a top on it because it'll cook faster. If you're boiling water, right. steaming vegetables, whatever you happen to do, um, just put a top on it. Put and, a lid and on it. Put a lid on it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and save some energy. And save some energy, yeah. I mean, it really is. And, um, you know, I think when we spoke prior to the show, I talked about the, some of the promotions that we did mm -hmm. uh, when we were kicking off the campaign. And one of the promotions was with Connecticut Public Television. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple from Vernon, uh, the idea was to go on to the CPTV website, submit your one thing, and then a winner was randomly selected to go down to the Women's, national, women's Basketball National Championships in Tampa, four days, all expense paid, wow. tickets, hotels, right. travel, the whole shooting match. So I went to CPTV to uh, meet the couple who was the winners, and I had to ask, what was your one thing? Right. And uh, the woman said, well, I have, um, there's a dry cycle on my dishwasher, and I turn it off. And I thought, oh, wow, that's pretty interesting. And I do just about all the cooking in my house, mm -hmm. and my wife does the cleaning. So I wasn't terribly familiar with, right. with, with the, the dishwasher or the, dishwasher. Yeah, mm -hmm. the heat cycle. And so that evening when I was cooking, I was relating to her what happened and how I met this couple. And I said, hey, do we have one of those on our dishwasher? And she said, yeah. I said, well, is it on? She said, yes. I said, well, let's turn it off. Right. So, you know, this, this is how... You don't um, necessarily need it. I mean, I do no. dishes and then they, you know, I ran a load this morning. They're mm -hmm. drying all day. And yeah. I mean, I'm not going to use them right away, so you might as well just turn it off. You don't need them yeah. to be immediately That's super what hot and dry. Yeah. yeah. And that does use a lot of power. Yes. Something else interesting that was on one of the, either the website or um, something else I read was don't, don't think you're heating your house with your fireplace or don't heat your house with your fireplace because actually it will draw 25% of your heat out yes. through the chimney. Yeah. I knew you needed to close your flue. Mm -hmm. like when you're done, once the fire's out, close yeah. the flue. Um, but it, it will suck it out 25% of your heated air. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you can enjoy a fire, but yeah. don't try it. Don't, it doesn't replace like a um, wood-burning stove or something for a heat source. No. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice for ambiance, but it, it yeah. really is uh, It's kind of counterproductive. Right. It, and I did not realize that. I assumed it was giving off heat while it was burning, and it, it actually does take a lot of um, take a lot of your heat out. Um, one other thing I want to mention, which is quantifiable, is you know you have the programmable uh, temperature controls, the thermostats, thermostats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you decrease it just your, if you decrease your standing temperature just two degrees in the winter, mm -hmm. and increase it just two degrees in the summer, you would save a hundred dollars a year in energy costs. Oh yeah. I, I mean, it adds up. Easily. It really, yeah. and you can't necessarily see it bill by bill, but over time, it really mm -hmm. does add up. Yeah. Now, you have a way on your website that people can take their one things and see this kind of savings. So we'll talk yeah. about that for a few minutes. Yeah, it's a new it's a new component of the website that we just finished and is about to go live. Uh, it's in the process of being mm -hmm. put up to the website. Yeah, it was done through a grant, the Emily Hall Tremaine Foundation here in Connecticut was nice enough to, we applied for it, and they were generous enough to give us a grant to build out what we call the aggregator. Okay. So in the next week or so, when you go up to onethingct.com and you enter your one thing, not only will it be able to tell you what your um, reduced energy consumption is, mm -hmm. uh, it'll also tell you the amount of greenhouse gases that you're reducing. Um, by whatever action it is that you're taking. Right. So you'll be able to know individually and, and your monetary savings over mm -hmm. a period of time. And then that will be taken and added to all the other people who have done that same thing. 
because the idea is to show what the collective effect, it's one of the ways of measuring the campaign, what is the effect of Everybody thousands of people doing day. one thing every mm -hmm. day? Well, the aggregator is going to help mm -hmm. give us a pretty good idea what that is. And, and I think the results are going to be pretty amazing yeah. because you know, the one, these one things, these little things really do add up and they really do have an mm -hmm. impact. And ideally, that will be something where people want to continue to go back and go back and Well, I and think so. I mean, things. particularly if you're you know, coming at it from the homeowner paying your bill yeah. standpoint, you can see what you're saving and then it makes a difference to you personally, but then also it is nice to know from an overall community and environmental standpoint that you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, you know, you recycle a can and you think, well, I recycled a can, that's great, but, mm -hmm. you know, does it really make that big of a difference if I throw it in the trash or not? But it, it does. Well, I think you it's said different. earlier, what, recycling a can what was worth... Yes. Uh, if you recycle a can, mm -hmm. it, that is three hours of television time. Throw three it. hours of television energy that you have... Wow, just by concerned. recycling just a can. Just by recycling yeah. one can. So if you're like me and you have, you know, your blue tote of cans that you've recycled, that's yeah. a lot of energy that you've saved. Mm -hmm. I just figured it was, you know, saving and having to get additional aluminum out there, but mm -hmm. it's energy yeah. that it takes to, you know, produce the new and, cans. So. And what does that take, really? Nothing. Yeah. And it's a habit. That's the thing, mm -hmm. too, is once you've picked your one thing, mm -hmm. it becomes a habit. Well, and one I thing, can't stand to throw a can away. Yeah, I'm with <laughs> you. it's a habit. Yeah. 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 And what, so. well, we're, as we're fond of saying, one thing will lead to another. Exactly. Once you find one and... I think what's at the heart, what's really good about this particular campaign is that in conservation, I don't think, has made the inroads that it really should have over the years. And a lot of it had to do with the fact that energy prices were just really cheap. Right. And I think people realize right now that the days of really cheap energy are probably over. gone for, for quite a while, if mm -hmm. not completely over. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think one of the reasons why conservation has, hasn't made the inroads that it should is because people associate conservation with deprivation. Yes. They think, okay, if I conserve, I have to give up something. Right. I don't know how, how old you are, and yeah. <laughs> I would, but I don't know <laughs> if you're old enough to remember Jimmy Carter sitting in front of the fireplace with mm -hmm. his sweater on telling everybody to turn down the thermostat right. during one of the first energy crises right. that the nation experienced. the gas lines. I yeah, and the gas that. lines, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's the perception of, of conservation, I think, mm -hmm. that people have is, okay, if I conserve, I have to give up something. Right. Or I have to be uncomfortable. I have to put on a sweater. I have to be cold, right. what have you. Uh, whereas, like you said, your example of recycling yep. a can, that's worth three or four hours of television right. time. Didn't do, it didn't cost Doesn't deprive you of anything. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, even covering your windows. You right. still can see your windows. You can still let the right. natural light in but it's helping you. So there's, there are hundreds of things that you can do that right. don't involve depriving yourself of anything but can help you reduce your, your energy consumption. We could go on forever about this, yeah. I know. And unfortunately, <laughs> we're just about out of time. But I do want to reiterate um, that the website, mm -hmm. onethingconnecticut.com, onethingct.com, onethingct.com mm -hmm. has all sorts of ideas. It has information about the expo. Yes. Um, the discounted coupons. The coupon, <laughs> yeah. um, which is important. We're trying to save money. Yes. Um, uh, you can log your one thing. You can go on mm -hmm. and aggregate what your one thing is. Yes. Um, you know, get more information. Mm -hmm. There's the expo coming up on October 10th through the 12th. 10, 11, and 12, and yeah. That's a great way to educate yourself and your family and maybe... It's going to be a tremendous amount of fun. Yes, it's going to be so, very educational. Fun. fun and educational. Yeah, which is and looking important. at the list of exhibitors, there's going to be lots of ways that that people can, uh, it's a lot of it's geared towards residences, which right. is fine. Right. Um, but I think there's, there, there's a lot of fascinating ways, things yes. that I hadn't even thought right. of or companies that I didn't Something know new and different. that were out there. Right. Yeah. So I, um, I want to invite everybody to check out the website, yes. check out the expo. Um, if you enjoy watching Life in Style with Sarah and you have some ideas for new shows or guests that um, you think would be great to see on the next edition or future editions of the show, um, I do have an email address, lifeandstylewithsarah at gmail.com. Please feel free to send them to me. I would love to see them. I'm always looking for new ideas. John, thank you so much for joining me. This my has pleasure. been great. Thank I'm going to go home and do my one thing, <laughs> or two, or three, or yeah, four. Two or three. Um, yeah. Until next month, take time to find out your one thing and then spread the word. Thanks for watching. Good night.